Yeah, welcome back. What we're looking at now is gender inequality in politics being of development in Nigeria. That's a topic we'll be looking at this morning. Uh, that's our first hot topic for the day. And we have a guest who has joined us and we'll be talking on this topic. We're glad to be joined by Frances Olisa Ogbonaya, broadcast journalist and women in politics or in leadership advocate. Good morning and welcome to the program, Ms. Ogbonaya. Well, right before Frances joins us, uh, which we hope will be uh, in a very short while, there's also something that really interested us in, uh, on the headlines of some dailies, and it was recently said. Uh, the, the Minister for Interior uh, said something that really gladdens the heart of some of us. Uh, Olubumi Tunjiojo said that now these are, uh, they are going to adopt principle of reciprocity in visa issuance. That is the kind of do me a do you kind of thing. If America, for instance, doesn't give us a visa freely or they have some bottlenecks that we have to pass through before we can get our visa, the American citizens that are seeking visa to Nigeria will also have the same. Imagine the audacity. So it means that we have something that other people want that we might not want to give to them if they do wrongly. Let's see if Frances has joined us. But in the meantime, kudos to the Minister of Interior for clearing the backlog of visas and all that. So Frances Olisa Obonaya, broadcast journalist and women in leadership advocate. Good morning and welcome to the show. Good morning. It's nice being there. Okay, yeah, we couldn't hear you, so we've thought that maybe you wouldn't be joining us anymore. Okay, um, you said, or it is said uh, in some quarters that uh, because of uh, the way women are represented in governance and all that is uh, the bane of this country. It's a problem for this country. Give us an insight into why that is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you know, generally, it's believed that uh, women are viewed as. Um, there's a, an old saying that says, train a woman and you train the nation. So women are, women, women are, when, are, when you come to families, families where women don't play five roles, don't really end up work. And the, the family is the nucleus of, of the bigger society, which includes Nigeria, we have. So, and these same women who play these very important families, important roles in families, get to the national level, at the leadership level of the state, and get alienated. Yes, we want to, to exploit. I do not know how reasonable that is. Most of the countries we talk about today as one of the most developed are countries where women play very uh, evidential role. For example, New Zealand is one of the best countries in the world today. It's behind the, one of the happiest. Even, let me just use, during COVID, women, countries led by women didn't manage COVID better than every other country. They, they are fact, from New Zealand to every other country that were led by women, countries that have women as prime ministers. Women are more conscientious. Women are more passionate leaders. Women are more honest, even in leadership. People set up companies, and when they set up companies and they want to achieve some certain targets, they put women at very strategic positions. They might end up putting men as the over, overall head, because very strategic roles are headed uh, at the by women. Women are believed to be less corrupt. Why? Their spirit of acquisition is not as high as that of a Nigerian man. A Nigerian man, for example, let me bring this closer, is actually believed to be polygamous in A man who had about 15 wives, about 10 other girlfriends in other parts of the world and country. We tend to acquire more, even if means stealing, so he can satisfy those people. And a Nigerian woman will not, even, will not even be proud to engage in polyandry, let alone such things that men engage in. 
women are less bridled. They are bridled when it comes to their their spirit of acquisition and corruption. And corruption is the bane of this country. And then again, why why the alienation of women is one of the problems of our country is that when you look at how long Nigeria has lasted and how much role the men has played from the colonial colonial days up to now. If the men has been ruling from 1960 up to now, I will end up going down. Nigerian economy keeps on hemorrhaging. Things keep getting bad. Is it not better we change the party? Is it not better we look at the other side? We are asking, they are saying, give women more, more opportunity. Women are more honest leaders. Women are more constructive. Women are family leaders. They are nation leaders. If we can fix men that is in this country, even you, you owe a lot. Well, um, when you talk about women being alienated, uh, uh, some people do not really understand because women are the only ones who have been given reserved positions. They are given a quota. They are, they, the forms for contesting for election are less than the one that men buy. Uh, women uh, sometimes are mostly chosen as uh, the running mates for governorship aspirants, and some of them actually become deputy governors. And so many other things. Women are the only ones who have a women affairs ministry. There's no men affairs ministry. So one would think that women are given the, uh, the opportunity to become what they want to become. Are you advocating now that the men should just give way and let the women rule? Because if they have to play in a particular field, they have to be ready to face mm. the challenges that come with that field. Don't you think so? I'll give an example of, let's say, Waek or Jam. They don't say women should have a quota that is smaller, but the women perform sometimes more than the men. So why not just give a level playing field and let everybody fight it out? Okay, okay. What it, else it, do the women want? Okay, good. You, it is wrong of you to compare qualification exams to politicking in Nigeria. I would say you are speaking from the point of uh, ignorance. Because they are not comparable. Oh, really? Uh, uh, just, yes. Just if, a moment. If, maybe, if, maybe you didn't get me right. If a man is buying a form to contest, for instance, for five million, I know of parties that have given no, theirs no, for no, free. No, 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 no. That no, is politics. I, I, I got you. I got you better off. So how ignorant you. am I? But no, hold on. From all your analogy, I only picked one. You said, for example, Jamb and Wayek, yeah. they don't give special consideration to women. They allow them to compete favorably with men. Isn't that what he said? Yes. And in the, in the banking sector as well, women are flourishing. Most of the heads of the banks are that women. That is what I'm saying. No quarter. I've said that it is wrong of you and ignorant, not wrong, rather, but it's ignorant of you to compare qualification exams exam, with speaking political offices in Nigeria. They are not the same. Not the same, not the same ecology, not the same um, milieu. They are not the same. It's wrong to compare a political milieu to a, a, a qualification exam. But that, let me leave it at that. Let me, let me help you out. Let me tell you. Politics in Nigeria has a has factors totally militating against women. They are not the same with examination. They are not the same with qualification exams. Let me tell you why you, you mentioned deputy, deputy governors. How many women are deputy governors in Nigeria? How many? They are not even up to six, as we are speaking. Out of 36 states. And you mentioned the Ministry of Men. Ministry of Women Affairs is just like every other ministry. And they are all answerable to, 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 to the man who is the executive officer. The minister cannot do anything. A minister, a minister or a commissioner takes orders from the governor or the president, who is a man. You initiate policies that, uh, that a man, the man who is the executive officer cannot relate to. It ends up on your desk. So what we are saying, there are factors to be taken against women beyond form buying. I'm a, I'm, 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 a, I'm a political politician myself. I have run for offices. So I am not saying, I am not one of, I'm not one of the theoretical supporters of women in politics. So I have been, I've been there, I've been involved. So I can tell you. 
buying form is not the problem in Nigeria. People can come together and buy you a form to run for political office. There are factors. There are social factors. There are factors that have been there for long. We are asking, give us laws. Laws where they will, where they will bring out, where they will say 35 percent. Hold on, not just that, uh, not the the theoretical 35 percent that we're talking about. 35 percent. Okay, for example, uh, in Kironia Junction, and um, a couple of them uh, tried to push a bill that there must be extra House of Red representatives meant for a woman for the state. Did you fly? The men militated against it. They voted against the National Assembly. These are the kind of views that would accept women. If they have given us one more seat from every state for a House of Red, we would have had extra six women in the House of in the, in the National Assembly. So at least show up the man, to show up the numbers of women there. But they said no. Why would they work? And it worked for them because they are more in number. These are the kind of things that would have helped. Not that 35 percent. And preserve percent, which is not even respected by many governments. It's not respected, and there is no law binding them. Those things are coming. There are many issues around them. We have the issue of um, of uh, where a woman comes from and where she's married to. And we tried making laws about them. We ask them this specifically for us. Tell us when a woman is married, where is she from? Then we see contest. They tell her to leave it blanket. And it's it's caused problems in some many places. When a woman who is from, for example, I'm from um, I married an Adam. I'm running for, I'm, I do politics in other state where I come from, where my husband comes from. But some women cannot do it. They have some I have colleagues who, who are from a certain state, mine's another state. When they went to their husband's state to run election, some people picked up legal cases against them. We saw what happened in the Ondo when the when what the river state woman was appointed, appointed as an ambassador. Ondo who protested said no, she's not from our place. Let her go to River State. He took the, the, the strong stance of Akeredol for you to actually start an appointment. Even the governor's wife, Akeredol, has to go back to Imo State to go and run for state after being married for 14 years. And you think Imo State will attend her? They told her to go back to her husband's house. On those who told her to go to Imo State. These are the things who ask the National Assembly. Please spell it out for us. Tell us where this a woman is from. This thing they started to leave it blanket. Still giving room for suspicion. These are the factors we take against women. We are not even talking about the capital intensiveness of politics. We are saying make fun free. Many people do not make it free. Some even make it free, then institute other issues that makes it difficult. It's a government, every political party, we are asking every political party to say 35% of our positions must go to a woman. And they make laws and say, men shouldn't, men shouldn't contest in this certain places so that women can go. Don't give us that 35% in actual sense. So, so that's the way you compare this, when you compare what we are facing with Jamba and Wayek, I was, I, I, I had to even, even, it takes, it took a lot of home training for me not to get angry with for me not to get angry with this. <laughs> okay, the critical question a man, every man always asks is, <laughs> What really do women want? So I was trying to put it into perspective. Now, mm -hmm. in politics, a lot of things have been done from mm -hmm. the point of view that I'm talking from, not as a man, but as a Nigerian. From the point mm -hmm. of view that I'm talking from, a lot of things mm -hmm. have been done. So the mm -hmm. question was, what else can be done? You just talked about the fact that every state should give one woman, if I got you right, uh, to be in the National Assembly. Every state should uh, that extra seat for the women to be in the National Assembly and all that. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you this, uh, mm -hmm. and this is not uh, talking down on the women. Um, okay. How would you assess the women that have already been given a chance in, yes, to, to perform inside mm -hmm. whether the National Assembly or the State Assemblies? How would you um, rate their performances? Or even a point, or even a point C. Yes. Uh, if, you, if you start to talk about that, if people start from the rock here, which, uh, which appointee has actually, since she left, none of the men will have been able 
pretty happy to see We saw Okonjo. Even the Femi, the finance minister. The woman they so did just give out. just give us a blanket rating of them because if you mention them, some people will also be mentioning uh, uh, Desani, Alison Madweke. So we are not mentioning the names. Just a blanket um, assessment of w the performance of women. Mm, in I'm, 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 I'm going to give you a blanket assessment, but um, there are facts relevant to the facts in question. And the fact is that when you, when you go to the National Assembly mm. and you see how much how much how much bills passed by women. You know, yeah, it's, you you would know that many of them are not are not rubber stamp. Women are women are doing far better. I'm also, I'm, I'm just surprised you're asking. Only do you know you just wanna tease us. Women are doing far better. They are more pro proactive leaders. They are more proactive people. We just want them to get uh, to give in uh, decision making positions. They are not giving the stomach making positions. They are not, you know, so we are asking. We are saying, we, ha we are doing well in the little ones you've given us from the state assemblies, where we are so few and minute. Many house of assemblies don't have women. Other state has no woman. Imo state has no woman member. Many other states do. In the northern part of the country. So, so much of them. So, and we are saying, how can you make laws for us without us? Make this 35% mandatory for political parties. However they want to figure it out, let them cut out 35% for us. Let's make a binding law. That's why I'm asking the, the, the state assemblies and the, and the national assemblies. But no, they can't do it because this decision should be made by men. So we're only hoping, asking women who are, who are the major voters, to actually begin to vote women. But it's difficult because women don't get, women rarely get uh, tickets of a uh, dominant political party because of the cost implications. Does, does it, will it really matter if it's a dominant political party, especially uh, nowadays that it seems as if a small party can also make uh, real good headlines when it comes to voting. We saw what Labour Party did, for instance, that uh, we never dreamt of. Two years ago, we didn't think Labour Party could even get a local government council, but well, see yes. what happened. So um, my final question for you right now is, um, even though people are asking, is Nigeria really ready for this kind of leadership that the women are advocating? But my question is, you just oh. touched the point that women are some of the major vo voters. In so many places, they have the numbers. Oh. What is your level of uh, uh, advocacy that you're carrying to the women folk themselves? Like you said, you've been telling them to vote the women. But how enlightened are they? How ready are they to support oh. themselves? The men have the brush code, more or less, as we, we like to uh -uh. say. But do, uh -uh. do the women have this mm. girl's code as well? Mm. Are they ready to support their own? Uh, oh. Okay, women, women, women are actually ready to support their fellow women. I can tell you. But um, with organization of poverty as a political as a political strategy by our political leaders, it's not helping us. For example, most of the women are poor and hungry. It's tough in Nigeria. It's been tough in Nigeria, and it gets tougher sadly. So um. Most of the women who are supposed to vote for their fellow women go to the poor and they are hungry. They have children to send for. And they see a man who comes to offer them about 15 or 20,000 say, vote for my candidate. The women, we do not have, we don't most them, we don't have the financial worship like men. See, a woman, a man goes and says, a man goes and says, I know you want to vote a bet, look at 15,000, I'm probably bring that very clean and crispy Nigerian note and shows the person. The woman will consider she's got no pot of soup at home. She will consider that, ah, after voting, she will be hungry. You no, know, she actually needs immediate solution to most of the problems she's having at home. She considers and takes money. You do not blame them. There is, there is no, no, no strategy to, no structure in place for them. Hunger, poverty, is militating against us. We can't help it. So we will keep trying. What I advise my fellow young women in politics is that if you want to join politics, there is no 
there is no special ballot box in women. It's the same ballot box. I advise young people, get ready to do what men do in politics. Everything they do, get ready to do. Everything you think they do to win an election, get ready to do. Including looking for money. Talk for money. Look for more money. Keep looking for more money before going to politics. Okay, well, um, it's, uh, maybe you'll, you'll say a final word because we are drawing the curtain right now. So I'll give you a minute to okay. talk to the women folk especially uh, and then to whoever else you want to talk to, if you can capture that in one minute. Okay, very well. I want to encourage every young woman who wants to join politics or those who are already in politics, those who have been trying and it looks like it's not working or it's getting difficult. Um, I, want them, I want to encourage them to keep keeping on. It's, a time is coming. A revolution is coming. Um, like, I, my, like I said in my last word, you must prepare for politics. It's not an easy terrain. Mm. Use, uh, do everything they do. Jesus for Jesus. And every other thing for Jesus. Money for money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank, th you. thank you so much, Frances, for coming <laughs> on the show this morning. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking with Frances Olisa Ogbonaya, a broadcast journalist and women in leadership advocate. We were talking about the fact that women should be given more opportunities, especially in this political space, so that they can be on the table when the decisions are being made, especially as it concerns women and children. Okay, so we're going to take a very short break and we're going to be joined by... Uh, our next set of guests. These, uh, these are two people, two young women, I would call them, that have done Nigeria proud. And the topic is finding solution to Nigeria's election issue with electronic voting. We'll start with this video clip that gives us an insight to what they are going to be talking about. Stay with us.